in the House, it's going to be very difficult for them on the numbers to continue putting out a budget on time. So we have to produce a product. Uh, the expectation is 90 days. That's going to be very difficult at this point. So although we have, uh, they have our thoughts and prayers on forward motion with the budget, um, we, we need something to act on. And we need it um, now, as soon as possible. Andrew. <coughs> Andrew, Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Um, uh, regarding uh, the dividend, uh, Peter, uh, Senator Michiki, you, you talked about um, the uh, emphasis on stabilizing it, and uh, Senator McKinnon you used the phrase, I think you used the phrase that you hope uh, cooler heads will prevail um, overall regarding the, the budget discussion. Is it challenging to uh, to uh, send that message to the public when significant number of legislators are saying to the public that um, it's wrong to make any cuts to the dividend. Andrew, uh, I certainly think it's difficult when there are mixed messages coming from the legislature. And so you have some folks that are talking about uh, restoring the current formula of the dividend. And the Senate has um, supported withholding a portion of the dividend, but we haven't spent any of it yet. We have tried to solve the problem for Alaska, but we are coming now up against the brick wall. We just have uh, this year and possibly next before you have to be into the earnings reserve. And that's what destabilizes the current formula. You won't be able to pay. If, if you pay full dividends, uh, it will go away. It, it is going to go away, and the governor warned on this four years ago when he started this discussion. And quite frankly, I don't know that I believed it then. Uh, we, you know, I, I still thought that oil could recover uh, you know, on year one or year two, but it's just not the case. We, we are now placing uh, the entire dividend program at risk by trying to fund it under the current formula. And I think that you've seen some politicians now coming off of the per, uh, percent of market value opposition. Uh, they are understanding that if we don't blend or find some new revenue source that is significant that we will not be able to stabilize Alaska's economy. And I'll just speak for myself on the income tax. Uh, the reason that I have been reluctant to move forward on an income tax, besides the point that a majority of the people I represent don't support that, is that that, it, that cannot close the hole. It, it, it is a small portion of a solution that could do anything to stabilize Alaska. The largest and single most important thing we can do for our state at this point is to use the power of past legislatures, the people of Alaska, with invested interest in the permanent fund corpus to start rolling off interest earnings to communities that depend on these resources. Matt? Um, <clears throat> Nat Hurst with the ADN again. Um, just wondering, thinking almost like past the budget um, to the issue of sort of 26 structural framework for the dividend for the permanent fund. Um, recognizing basically that, that there seems to be an agreement among most legislators, House and Senate, that that is something that needs to be done. Um, it seems like there's been agreement on that for you know at least the past year, but it's a question of how do you come to a, a political sort of agreement on that? What other things might have to happen to get the House to sign on to a, a restructuring of the permanent fund? Um, do you guys see at this point that there is any path to re reaching sort of a compromise on that issue? Do you think there's going to be a way to limit that discussion to 26 alone? Or at this point, are you guys seeing another path to that? Are you open to accepting other elements of a deal to get yourselves out of here, um, you know, in less than 150 days. <laughs> well, let me answer one of the three questions that you had. There has been <laughs> varying uh, levels of support on 26, but essentially the statement is true that the governor, the House, and the Senate all agree on some form of 26. That's why uh, we, we stick with 26. That's why we are hopeful that 26 will uh, emerge as the answer. Um, when you have that kind of agreement, it, that's not a, um, uh, a naive assumption that you, you should be able to get it when three people agree on it. Um, but it's, it's, um, 
It's been held hostage. It remains uh, hostage. There is a conference committee on it, uh, and we will push to, to get that conference committee going. I know that, again, conference, conference committees are almost always discussions between the two chairs to kind of schedule things and like that. I'm not that person. It's Senator McKinnon. Um, but I think that's, that, that's the answer, is that you have three of the three who uh, get a say in this, who agree on some form of 26, we should be able to pass that. That's why we are hopeful that 26 is one of the answers. Senator McKinney, did you have any comments as chairman? Thank you, Mr. President. So this, it, I, I've served in the House and I served in the Senate, uh, six years in the House, and this is my sixth year in the Senate, only four of which have been in leadership. Matt, this administration has set an example to try to leverage things and so it's not about coming together and understanding the implications of a particular piece of legislation, but sort of putting that bar in and then trying to pop something else out along the same time. And what I think it's created is a stalemate for all of us in that you have to add something else. That we're not voting on things that we agree on anymore. We're voting on things that we agree on to try to accomplish something that we don't agree with. And I think that that has created the friction and the difficulty in moving anything forward. And so uh, in the past, I have not gotten my way on many things and felt disadvantaged or underrepresented or not heard or however you want to describe that. But it is against the law uh, to do things quid pro quo. And that's what I feel like we've been doing for the last we've been asked to do for the last few years. Uh, I haven't asked the House to do things that they don't want to do individually. I believe everyone knows that the percent of market value is what we need to do to help Alaska and that the dividend is part of that task. No one is asking the House to lock down and say that dividends permanently are going down to a particular number or that dividends are going away. What the Senate has said is the dividends are part of the solution and that if we continue down the same path, the dividends in perpetuity will be at risk. And so I, I, I'll just speak for myself. It feels like the House is still working from that minority position of leverage instead of majority position that is having to take that tough step and try to pull people together on a particular path. They are each working independently on what their individual beliefs are, and this, again, this is just for me, versus coming together and trying to uh, unite around this is what's best for Alaska. And uh, th that's just how I feel about it. I am certain that they have other conversations around that. I'm not trying to be disparaging, but when I hear the president talk about being held host hostage, we look at 26 in the income tax. Um, you know, there are three huge components in a bill that should be of a uh, single subject, and I mean that in broad terms. Um, and so I believe we all agree on the percent of market value. I believe we all know that the dividend has to be part of the solution. And from my position, let's take the big things first, and then we'll get to the other conversations. Senator? Well, can I just follow up and make sure I Sure enough. Go ahead. To me, it sounds like what the two of you have said basically is that you do not feel like the Senate majority should have to give anything else up at this point to achieve SB 26. Is that a, a good understanding of your guys' position? There's a difference between compromise and being held hostage. What we're saying is that SB 26 stands on its own two feet as a good idea for the state of Alaska, and we have general agreement of the three bodies that that is the truth. We'll compromise. We've done that many times. Uh, but the fact is, is that there's a difference between compromising and a desire to hold everything hostage. Senator Machiki? Yeah, you can hear my pen click. And if you played hockey, that would be a sound of the stick on the ice to send me the puck. But, um, you, you know, <laughs> yeah, or the box. Um, it, now, we've given up a lot, quantifiably. If you look at our position a couple of years ago, do I think that we can't afford to cut substantially out of this budget? I do not agree with that. I think there's a lot of room to cut. I think there's a lot of room to cut. Look at what we're spending on in the Department of Health and Social Services on Medicaid alone. Hundreds of millions of more efficiency that can be delivered in, in those services to Alaskans. So 
we have softened where we stand on the cuts just because we understand the makeup of the House and who is in the governor's seat. That is not how we feel would be the best way to manage this government. So we have come across substantially. Our compromise is quantifiable, but it's never recognized. It's never recognized by the press. It's never recognized. It's not often recognized by the press. I'm not attacking you. <laughs> Um, it's that never me. recognized by the other side. And the fact is we are in a very different position than where we would like to be. We're trying to work with the makeup of the legislature today. The Senate majority would have a much lower number. Right. So when people talk about us wanting to get into the dividend, the last thing in the world I ever thought I would be doing is affecting the size of the dividend or talking about the earnings reserve. But if we're going to use the earnings reserve, the Senate is demanding that we have a rules-based system. And we all, a year ago, agreed that that was the way forward. If you're going to use the earnings reserve, we refuse to put dividends and the earnings reserve and the corpus at risk. So we do believe that those compromises are in place and available, and we hope we can get to the table to deliver them in the next couple of weeks. Let me just qu quickly, um, you, you've brought up, obviously, a very interesting subject to, to us. <clears throat> the idea of the quid pro quo, that, that whatever we want has to be leveraged against something else, or whatever may be in the best interest of the state of Alaska has to be leveraged against something else. Last year, when we were stalemated here and we were begging the governor to take some of the things that he had put on the call, to take them off the call, because all they were serving to do was create a distraction where everyone had an, a, a, an excuse to say no on everything. We got him finally to take it off the call, and it took us six days to put a budget together. We then had the capital budget, which I think we were the ones that made the call on the capital budget. We did it in a day. These things can happen rather quickly, but if you are in a position of never leaving your minority mindset, as the uh, co-chair brought up, if you're never going to leave the minority mindset that you can't get anything unless you leverage it against something else, we could be here for a very long time. Uh, we have zero minutes left. Becky, do you have a really quick one? Can you just fire it out really? <laughs> For Senator McKinnon, can you update us on where things stand with the sexual and other um, harassment policy that went to NCSL, but then we haven't had any meetings since? Thank you so much. Uh, well, we're waiting. Uh, uh, we have all the, uh, let me, I'm trying to think back because I had an update on Friday. Uh, the comments are in. We're going through those comments now, and uh, we should be meeting after that to incorporate uh, a committee meeting around those. There is further work to be done. That is a legal policy only, and we're uh, looking for the chairman to uh, provide us additional uh, time to go back and look at uh, some more uh, phase two of that particular policy. Let's call it. See you guys.